All right, I'm very, very excited to introduce our next speaker, Craig Zelensky, hailing all the way from Scotland, now via San Diego, uh, across the Pacific Ocean to talk to you guys. Um, Craig's time is split between working full-time in the tech industry, um, part-time coaching and training, and Craig is going to talk to us about strength training for normal humans. Um, his answer to what normal person is capable of doing is the one that I particularly like. He says the normal person is capable of doing pretty much anything. So please welcome Craig. Friends of all, strangers from distant lands. It's my great pleasure to be in front of you talking here at the Council of Belmont. Um, for something that's, that's very close to my heart, um, I actually never thought that I would get to present anything. I thought it would be cool just to be watching this kind of stuff. So for me, it's a real honour being in front of such excellent and admirable poets. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop, I'll stop. So basically the scope of this is uh, it's, it's kind of going to cover um, what I define as a normal person, so that would not be somebody who either is a competitive or a recreational athlete already, um, or somebody who has some form of physical impairment, that's the scope that I'm talking about, and uh, not that you know they could be considered either sub or super normal, but just the fact that there are modifications that I would give them that maybe you wouldn't prescribe for what the intention, what the intention is here. Um, is that door locked? I don't want anyone leaving. <laughs> um, is anyone under the impression that health and fitness is sorted? We've got it all right and we're laughing? No? Good. Pay attention. Right, so me, um, I'm an international speaker as of today. It's <laughs> um, nice that. Um, my athletic background really is what I feel puts me in a really good position. Uh, to talk about this, uh, my athletic background being the fact that I'm very lazy, generally, um, and I have been since I was born. Um, that lazy, though, that's kind of defined by society. Um, it's my position that actually, you know, we don't really ever want to do anything we shouldn't have to do. So, you know, why would you? Um, when I was growing up, really, you know, I found that anyone who was anyone of my age as a child who was in, involved in any kind of competitive sports was only slightly less mouthy than their parent who would invariably be standing on the sidelines shouting abuse at referees or shouting instructions at their, uh, at their kid. And I was like, I don't want to part that. I'm going to play the Lego, which is what I did. Played the Lego. Um, read Choose Your Own Adventure books, uh, and then in, well, later on it became films, and after that it became video games. This is a video game, incidentally. Um, now, the, what that basically means is that, you know, hardship's hard to come by these days. Uh, we don't have to try very hard to survive, which means that, you know, ancestrally speaking, we used to have to, sort of, we, ha we had a, a sedentary life that was punctuated by hardship. Um, or in some instances, we had a life that was just hardship and we would adapt to that. So it's trying to figure out, you know, how do you, what do you do in a modern setting that's going to fix that? Um, so I've put a conclusion here, just in case, for the rest of my presentation, I'm staggering about over the word endocrinological. Did I get that right, Alice? Hopefully. Um, so this is basically the answer. This horrendously pixelated image is uh, my foray into high intensity training, the weighted form of high intensity training, um, but the answer to the question is linear progression followed by periodized progression. That's, that's the answer. So if you don't remember anything else, if you Google that, you've, you've got it sorted from, from here on in. Um, who better than a very clever Russian? To, uh, to state what strength is, because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of nebulous, and it's, especially in today's society, it's got a lot of different connotations. You know, 
Um, anyone who is strong is on the fringe for some reason. You know, if you ever see something on the TV about somebody who's strong, it's like, check this weirdo out, because, you know, it's a strong person. Um, but then when you look at it from another perspective, all superheroes have got superhuman strength, almost always. So it's like, what does that mean? Strong people are weird, weird in real life, but in like video games and like comics and things like that, superheroes always are massively strong. What's going on there? And um, this was Verkashansky, who um, was in the USSR. So while 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 the West was concentrating on cardiovascular fitness as the answer to everything, the East was going, let's concentrate on strength. So what is strength? Um, strength is the product of muscular action, says Verkashansky, and that means it affects the connective tissue, ligaments, tendons, bones. Um, it's also neurological, initiated and orchestrated by electrical processes. So there's that word again, let's just call it hormonal, because that's what it is. Um, and and that's, that's something that's really, really important. Strength is that kind of holistic, you know, it affects the architecture of your cells. So from your cells up, it gets affected. It's a pretty cool diagram, I kind of like it. You like my wee emoji there? Um, and this is, this is basically about as far as anatomically I can understand these kind of things. Um, motor neurons, so central nervous system, sending a signal, signal um, to the muscles to do stuff, okay? There's the muscle fibers right there. You your type ones. That's your uh, your slow moving, shuffly type guys. Then you get your type two A's. That's your sort of sprinter muscles. And then you've got your two X's, the best ones, the ones that I like the best. They're kind of ones that you see. It's likely the weightlifters and people who have like incredibly high box jumps and things like that. Those ones get recruited, and um, for that that kind of exercise, I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. Myelin. Does everyone know what myelin is? Yeah? Wow. If this was five years ago, you'd all be like, what are you talking about me? Um, that stuff insulates the, the uh, nerves. So that's like, you know, if your brain was a server, um, the difference between having a really patchy Wi-Fi network and having a, like an Ethernet cable connected directly from your brain to the thing that you want to communicate with, it's like it, it increases the neural conductivity and, and the, the velocity of the signal that goes through, so it's mega, mega important. Also, sarcoplasm, talk more about that later. What's normal? Trevor, let's call him here. He's normal. This is uh, him chilling at his job, making sure he stays hydrated, because uh, that's what he wants to do. Um, but 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 look at him. Like this, I consider this to be like normal. I mean, a lot of people have desk jobs. A lot of people are sitting there, okay, and doing what it is that they do. And you can see he's not in the best of positions, is he? Looks pretty broken, right? Internally rotated, not so well. Um, but my point here, and think about my life when you think about this, is that training. Well, not training is also training. So he's training himself to be in this position because he's doing it with monotonous regularity. He doesn't know that he's training, but this is being in training. This this is him in like his normal state. So now you're gonna say, all right, sedentary guy, it's time to get moving. And he, his standard position is in a broken position. So you have to fix the position before you do anything else. You can't just go start squatting 400 kilos. What else is normal? This one blew Dallas's mind. This is a. Uh, this is when Kim Navi back in 2012 um, beat one of the Chinese teams uh, at an esports arena. And um, each of these guys, they had this team had one 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 million dollars for being good at a computer game, right? I love video games, and um, these guys made a million dollars between them. And then in 2000, 2015, uh, 1.2 million each. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of money in 
being very, very good at video games. Now you tell somebody who's basically pinned their hopes on being amazing at, say, one of these video games, that uh, you should go out and you should do, you should run around and you should kick a ball and stuff like that. And they're like, you have not laugh? Yeah. So the other thing is that these people know how to design characters when they're playing games. They have to have an amazing muscle structure, you know, and um, they have to have all of these components um, that make their character in the game really, really good so that they can do well in the game. And then this is, they play it at four in the morning and reach for pizza. And you're like, you've got that backwards. You know what I mean? It, sh it should be the other way around, right? It should be, somehow there's this disconnect between the character and, and them. They pour everything into the character and it just doesn't exist for them. Here's the, the World of Health Organization's problems that they've got with them. Um, sedentary lifestyles, and um, it's a fairly long list. You probably add to it if you want it. So the question is, um, the problem arises when you're trying to figure out what to do. So if these guys know at some point that they have to do some form of physical exercise, what's it going to be? Uh, there's so many different things to, to choose from. I mean, do you say start, start running, start cycling, become a gym rat, banging out bicep curls? Um, you should do CrossFit, you should do T-TAP. You have to have a T-TAP, you have to Google it. Um, or those little pink weight dancing things that they do. I don't know what that's called. In gyms, when everyone's listening, they're like techno and throwing little weights around. Anyway, so where do you start? Well, one possibility is cardio. So quickly, um, let's have a look at what that does. Uh, I like to say that the 1980s called and uh, asked for their exercise recommendations for heart health facts <coughs> because um, this is not it. Uh, as Matt was saying earlier on, you know, that was basically the original driver. Especially in the West, we were like focusing on that. If people are having heart attacks, then we make the heart stronger. So everyone should, uh, should do cardiovascular exercise. I'm actually picking on this guy, specifically because he's on a bike. Look at that broken position, right? Closed hip, hunched over, probably going faster than they should, right, Matt? And for hours. So he sits in his office, broken, and he gets out, and he's broken again. What does it do to your uh, bone mass? It's kind of good. It's all right. Do you know what I mean? If you're just starting, if you're sedentary and you start this, then it's a bit of a plus. It's a bit of a sadder for your muscles though, because what happens is your type two fibers begin to atrophy and be replaced with type one fibers. So you're basically training yourself to become slower. And that's cortisol, or sorry, that's testosterone. So initially it goes up if you're sedentary, but in a long enough timeline, your testosterone goes down. And as your testosterone goes down, your cortisol goes up, okay? Now, you don't have to know what this is. Testosterone good, cortisol bad. That's all you need to remember. Then there's these chaps. Hey, look, the massive. So mass is an interesting one. Remember I was talking about sarcoplasm? So if you're a rugby player, you want to be massive. Um, if you're you know, a bodybuilder, you want to be massive. Uh, this is okay for your bone density. And something weird goes on with your muscles. And that, that weird thing is the sarcoplasm increases, but, and you do get stronger, but not nearly as much as you could. Okay, so you, and it's all right with, uh, with testosterone and cortisol is manageable, but the, the, you put on a lot of mass, and this mass means that your vascular system has to handle it, okay? Your vascular system can't handle it, and your muscle complex can't keep up. This is my wonderful wife, doing uh, some high intensity exercise. Look how hunted she looks. Look at her face, right? And this is kind of what, what Matt was saying as well, you know, you have to be a pretty motivated athlete to stick this kind of stuff out. So it's a big plus in terms of bone density, and um, it's good for your, your type 2A fibers. Uh, it's 
you get an amazing dose of testosterone, but cortisol is the real problem. And you really have to modulate this kind of exercise. And because if you're doing it chronically, like Matt was talking about, about people who are chronically cycling or chronically running or you know, in, in that sort of too hard a zone, you break a human sick up, oh, she's tough. Look at that guy. That's Anatoly Pizarenko. Um, he was a weightlifter. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a this is a, a great picture because look how beautiful that score is. Right there, under a, a massive amount of load. I removed some slides um, that had kids squatting and old Chinese gentlemen squatting. Okay? So here's another single takeaway. You should be able to do this. It doesn't necessarily have to be weighted, but it should be something that you you care a lot about. What does it do if your bone density increases it? What does it do for your muscle mass? Increases your two A's. You get two X's in there as well. Testosterone, up and up and up. And cortisol is manageable with your sort of rest periods. Going back to the start, like the, the, the start of the day, we were kind of talking about um, hierarchies, I call them hierarchies, okay? Um, and there's a reason for this. Maslow never made what's called a pyramid. They, they call this a pyramid, okay? Um, and this has been taken by the, the industry, the fitness industry, the health industry, whatever. And it's it's been made into a hierarchical system. Everything gets prioritized over something else. So you keep prioritizing things, which doesn't make any sense. And when you Google looking for a fitness, fitness pyramid, all you get is annoying triangles. <laughs> Wait, there's like one pyramid there, there's another one, but pyramids have sides, don't they? So which side is the important side here, do you think? Which is the most important slide, uh, side? They're all important. Because the pyramid will fall over otherwise, otherwise, won't it? Now, uh, we first, um, when Brad opened, he was talking about wearable technology and how useful that is. I agree, but do you know what these little dials on the watch are called? <laughs> I'm not making that up, that's what they're actually called. Okay, complications. So people are adding stuff on to try and manage this and manage that and the other. And the kind of things that they're tracking are utterly pointless. You know, kil uh, calories, we're not candles. So that's irrelevant. Points arbitrarily created by, like, you know, companies which don't make any sense. And your weight, which I'm, I'm obese, I'm, rough, I'm, I'm nearly obese, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of in there. So if I was tracking my weight, I would be perpetually upset. My good mate, Scozotron, he wants to strip everything down and he's absolutely, absolutely right. When in doubt, amputate, take things away, don't add stuff on. So what do you do? Squat, deadlift, press. Bench and Olympic lifting. Olympic lifting comes after you get good at that other stuff. When you do it, three times a week. Practice your range of motion first, okay? And it's only practice, there's no pressure on you to do anything else. You must just practice range of motion until you can move well. There's no point in adding weight until you can do that. Once you can move well, then you increase the speed and velocity at which you move. Okay, and then seven sets, five sets, three sets, or one set of five reps. So like for example, I'd probably start with a lightweight squatting seven by fives. And then as that got progressively heavier, I would go down to five by fives. And maybe do three by fives for like the upper body exercises or smaller muscle groups. Add weight only when you can and modulate rest. If you're worried about this hasn't been much of a cardiovascular workout, then you simply modulate your rest. So one to two minutes, harder on the cardiovascular system. And if you have five minutes, then that's a nice amount of rest. 
So, Socrates never wrote anything down, I don't think. So we don't know the accuracy of this. But I don't really mind because if you read it, it seems like it's a fairly, a fairly profound statement as far as I'm concerned. And it's my position that right now humanity is kind of in its twilight. And although there's people who are saying, you know, we have to do something different and we have to do something well, and the message needs to get out there a lot more. And societal oddities, no matter how absurd, become the norm. So if we start strength training, hopefully everyone will start strength training, then it'll be normal for people to strength train, it'll be normal for people to squat when they're waiting for the bus or whatever. So we just have to work towards doing something like that. And we're in a global health catastrophe, and uh, we have to see that with both eyes open. I know that only the strong will survive. I agree to announce this is the end. Bid you all a very fun farewell. <laughs>